Hello, my name is Barrett Anderson. I'm the COO of Strategic News Service uh, and the Future in Review Conference. And I'm here today with Mark Anderson, who is the CEO of SNS, the chair of FIRE, the conference, and the CEO of Pattern Computer, which is a computing company that was born on stage at FIRE five years ago, Mark? How was that? 2015. Now worth more than a billion dollars. So not bad for a little... <laughs> A little company right. coming up out of nowhere. We are talking today about, uh, for those of you who don't know us, fun fact, uh, Mark is also my father. SNS is a family media company that he started in 1995. It was the first paid subscription newsletter on the internet. And we are the best in the world at making predictions, accurate predictions about the future of technology and the global economy. Mark's publicly graded predictions have a 95.1% accuracy rate and they have uh, stayed in and around that rate for uh, the last, how long have you been doing that? For 15 years? Okay. Actually, it's way better than that. Okay. 95.5 now. 95.5, okay. <laughs> and we've been checking those since- uh, bumped up. Since 95. Yeah. And that doesn't include the many predictions that we make in, in the SNS Global Report every week. That's just your 10 annually publicly released predictions. But um, if you are a subscriber to the Global Report or a member, of, a member of SNS, you know that there are a lot of predictions that we make all the time. We talk a lot about global politics. Uh, we spend a lot of time identifying patterns in global politics and, and helping our members understand how technology drives the global economy and what that looks like in an international uh, political setting. And we're going to talk this morning about uh, an alliance that uh, we refer to internally uh, as CRINC, which is the uh, strategic alliance, military, cyber, economic between China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. And Mark, I'm curious, you know, we've been, we've been writing about this kind of global big picture alliance for a while now and its implications um, in light of many kind of current day political international tension points, I might, if I were to put them, phrase it lightly, but I'm curious, <laughs> I'm curious uh, to hear your, you know, when you, you were the first really to kind of identify that alliance. And I'm curious, what, what was it that brought that up for you? Where did you first see that? Yeah, uh, this came up Barrett, because of patterns made, we call them patterns made and patterns broken. Um, there was a pattern in North Korea of stumble bum inability to, to do well with missiles and with uh, nuclear weapons. And this was going on for quite a while. And then there was a sudden pattern broken and they were very good. And they went from, from being, uh, those who were studying this will remember this, rockets were exploding, things weren't going well. Uh, we were pretty comfortable in the West that it would take a long, long time before any serious ICBMs showed up. Uh, their, their bombs were too heavy to put on top of a missile, no threat to us. And then, oops, overnight things changed. And you didn't have to be a rocket scientist to ask yourself, why did that pattern break? And then uh, a small story occurred where when a ship- say, When you say things changed, what was the specific- Suddenly they were good at missiles. Suddenly they were, they were shrinking the size of the nuclear weapons every day. They were having new nuclear tests that were all successful. They were building new testing facilities. Okay, so you saw this happening and, and then? It made me curious. <laughs> and so uh, in my curiosity, I dug up, there was a, uh, a ship that was discovered. It was shipping grain, I believe. And they, someone, American, I believe, uh, probably the American Navy stopped the ship looked under the grain and found a missile being shipped from Iran to North Korea. Hmm. Oh, so that was the beginning of crank. And I started thinking more and more about this. I knew that Iran had been getting the missiles from Ukraine actually, and from Russia, both of which were at that time part of the Soviet Union. And so little by little, I started to put these pieces together. I knew that North Korea was nothing but a puppet state for China. And that led to Crink. And I tried this out on the just retired Minister of Defense at a security meeting uh, in London. And a funny thing happened there. 
So you've got a lot of people around the West who are, you know, in Intel and defense in this meeting. And I asked this fellow on stage, I won't give his name. Um, I gave him all the evidence that I'm mentioning to you. We know that rockets are being shipped from Iran to North Korea. Mm -hmm. We know that Korea has improved their, their testing abilities greatly. We know that uh, Iran is under a testing prohibition by a treaty. We wonder if, in fact, the improvement in the nuclear tests in North Korea are actually being done for Iran as a trade for missile technology. And we know that China treats North Korea as a puppet state that it owns. And we know that the original missile technology, if not the nuclear, came from Russia. And he said, no, there's no such thing. And then Gordon Chang, who's well known, was who was in the audience, said to us quietly, said, wait five minutes, I'll be on stage, ask me again, it's all true. And then it turned out now, years later, it was all true. Mm -hmm. So, so that was the that was the beginning of crank. The be yeah. So one of the things that I think that I have found uh, very interesting, uh, I wrote about it in our last global report, uh, but is kind of the expanding influence of crank, right? So mm -hmm. we have watched uh, in the last few years, a few states kind of start to become more a part of that alliance, including, I, I believe, Kazakhstan and uh, Belarus, which was whose uh, politically run leader was essentially deposed and uh, had to flee to Lithuania uh, mm -hmm. and is now essentially a Russian puppet state. Mm -hmm. uh, got a friend of mine who lives in, um, who, she, doesn't live, she lives in the US, but she's from Kyrgyzstan, very concerned about the same thing happening in her country. Yeah. Uh, it's also, you know, and I'm so, I think what we're starting to see is this, this kind of transition between crank of old and crank of new, which is actually expanding to many more countries and many more letters that are seeking the support of that initial alliance, whether that's militarily, economically, um, and are then benefiting from that in some way. I, I would say the same thing you're saying slightly differently. I would say that once it became clear that crank members could invade their neighbors using non-nuclear weapons without fear, the world changed. And China and Russia and, and Iran all are actively doing that today without any concern of nuclear war with anybody else. So we've gone back to the Middle Ages, basically. We're throwing stones and we've lost the mutual assured destruction that was keeping everybody in line for a long time. And Crink is very active in that. The really big worry though, and I think why we're talking right now, is that North Korea, the puppet state, is doing these favors, I believe, for Iran and others in nuclear testing and in missile testing. So we saw seven missile tests in the last three weeks, I believe. And the whole world is going, what's, what's going on? What's going on? And it's um, not what they think, and which is why we're here right now. So it's not just some stupid little fat guy trying to show off to negotiate treaties with the United States, which is what you'll read in the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal. It's some stupid little fat guy who's acting as a puppet for Crank and doing a lot of very dangerous things that are real with real ICBMs and real nuclear weapons on their behalf. So we talked briefly, you and I talked briefly earlier about the, the difference between a ballistic missile, uh, which is what you're referring to. There've been a series of ballistic missile tests uh, in Yemen and then and elsewhere. China has been, I believe, deploying, deployed a few in the last couple of months. Right, so the, the world, whatever the world is. Let's assume, well, let's assume that for the people watching this video, don't know the, the, the significance of a ballistic missile. Can you explain it for them? I'll show you. <laughs> a ballistic missile is ballistic because it's fired into space or near spirit space, and then it returns. Mm -hmm. That means it's going at extremely high speeds when it comes back, and it's difficult to defend against as compared to prior missiles. So, um, most people think that there probably only are five countries maybe that have them. It's a big deal. 
Um, North Korea has fired a couple of shots like that, two or three, maybe maybe more, uh, but not very many. Most of the missile uh, firings by North Korea are of lesser quality and type, but they did just fire, uh, I think, two. So, um, and, and not quite what you said, Yemen does not test. But one reason we're talking right now is that I noticed last weekend something which really caught my eye, and that was that um, United Arab Emirates apparently had just uh, deflected an ICBM attack from the Houthi people, troops in Yemen, which most of us would probably think of as insurrectionists wearing sandals with AK-47s. What are they doing with ICBMs? And it turned out this was the third ICBM attack, if this story is correct, by the Houthis on Emirates. Now we know that the Houthis are literally the playthings of Iran. Iran is, in this story we're telling, you know, Iran is being very aggressive in terms of its expansion plans and the Houthis fighting the Saudis basically in Yemen as part of that, the insurrection in Yemen, which was a nice peaceful place until they showed up, um, have created complete civil war there. But firing ICBMs? So what does that time. mean? What is the significance of that? It's a little mind boggling. It would be as if I told you that the Navajo Nation fired an ICBM against Washington, D.C. How would they, where'd they, what they, what, who, what, where, why, why, you know, it's just a category of weapon that you wouldn't expect to be coming out of Yemen or out of those people in Yemen. So pretty obviously, we have to go back and say, these are probably Iranian missiles, the same missiles that are being sent to North Korea as part of Crink. And we better all wake up to the deeper integration of Crink and, and its willingness to share very, very dangerous weapons throughout its realm. And I think that's why we're having our little chat today. So when I see things like this, one of the things I often wonder is why, right? Like, why now, why are you choosing to fire ballistic missiles in a public way that will clearly get the attention of the United States and other countries around the world? Mm -hmm. uh, and like, what, what is it about this moment where they're like, okay, cool, time to deploy a few more ballistic missiles and get everyone's attention? Well, we could mention that Israel has been making peace in the Middle East, and, and I think Emirates is part of that story, and Iran hates Israel, so they're tooth and claw against each other. Um, but on a deeper level, it's what we just said, I believe. Each, each of the Crink members is now emboldened to take territory and to fight openly uh, in a non-nuclear stance uh, to gain territory uh, as it wishes. And so China is eager to have Taiwan. Yeah, China already took the South China Sea. Clearly Russia and Ukraine. Russia took uh, Crimea. Russia is eager to take Ukraine. Um, they really want it. All the talk about this is a little, little fake to me. Putin really, really, really wants you return Ukraine to the Soviet empire. And, and what you said is true. All of these neighboring republics are under the gun. So, you know, Belarus is already over, I think that's done. And uh, there are other nations that are next. So these guys are serious. And I think they realize that by acting in concert, they create a two or three front war. Exactly, that's what uh, I was gonna say. It's really hard to respond to one thing when there's also another invasion going on simultaneously in a different yeah. direction. Yes, all for one, one for all. Yeah. So anyway, that's crank for you. All right, well, I think we should wrap up there. I have many more questions, but we'll save them for a future podcast, a future vlog, if you will. Um, Thank you so much for your time today, Mark. We really appreciate hearing from you. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with Strategic News Service and the Future in Review Conference, um, you can sign up for uh, an SNS membership in the uh, description below this video. You can also find more information about our upcoming FIRE Conference, which will take place 
February 28th through March 4th online. It's a virtual show featuring some of the smartest people that we know in the world, uh, most innovative technologists in the world, focused broadly on international geopolitics, uh, all the things we've talked about today, the future of AI, uh, the smartest, uh, you know, clean energy and most innovative clean energy companies we know, we will be covering all of that. So we hope you will join us at future interview. Fire 22. See you there. <laughs> Thanks, Barrett.